a road accident. Soon an ambulance will be on its way. A message on the teleprinter gives the details. Only too often, ambulances are not originally designed to do their specialised job. They're adapted from other vehicle chassis. But this week, a new ambulance designed from scratch is being tested in Surrey. Two years of work have gone into its making. Features recommended by a recent Ministry of Health Committee have been incorporated, and some of them have been improved on. For instance, the Ministry recommended front-wheel drive and automatic transmission, because automatic transmission means the driver can keep two hands on the wheel. It makes his job less tiring as well as safer. It also means that the engine and the transmission are as far from the patient as possible. Independent suspension on all four wheels improves the ride and makes the vehicle safer, particularly when cornering at speed. And drivers report the vehicle steers well, particularly through heavy town traffic. Its petrol engine comes from a high-performance car and it accelerates like one. There are powerful hydraulic brakes to cope with emergency stops. It's a situation that's been set up to put the ambulance and its equipment through their paces. A rescue kit fitted inside the passenger door means that the ambulance men can release casualties that are not seriously trapped. This ambulance is equipped with a pair of sophisticated stretcher trolleys. They make moving an injured person a much easier and sometimes safer operation than a pole and canvas stretcher used to be. Each end of the trolley can be raised and the angle can be adjusted to cope with various kinds of injury. The designers of the ambulance produced a new rubber-sprung suspension for the chassis. Already, they're trying to improve it. The floor, 18 inches from ground level, allows the trolley to be lifted into the ambulance more easily. It should also make it safer for elderly or infirm walking patients to climb aboard. The ambulance has its own specially designed carrying chair on wheels. In other circumstances, it could be used to help patients down flights of stairs, or it could be used in cramped rescue conditions. The chair is designed so that a patient needn't be strapped in while he's being carried. One, two, three. And from this chair, a patient is conveniently transferred to the trolley stretcher. Everything in this ambulance has been designed to get patients on their way with the minimum of handling. Again, the automatic transmission helps to keep any jolting of the injured people aboard down to a minimum. Estimated time of arrival at Epsom District Hospital, 15 minutes over. From the driver's cab, there's a door leading to the patient in the back, and there's plenty of room for the attendant to work during the journey. On board, there are terminals for fitting incubators for premature babies, kidney machines, and other specialised medical apparatus, and they all work off the vehicle's batteries. Injured people who need oxygen or resuscitation are treated with the ambulance's portable equipment. During the journey, the patients have been kept warm by the ambulance's own air conditioning system. It can cope with most weather conditions in this country. As normal, the hospital staff have been alerted by the ambulance crew's message, and they're already waiting. The doctor decides that one of the patients should stay at this hospital. The other patient needs major treatment, so she will travel on to a specialised unit. The patient who is to stay goes with the portable resuscitator. If necessary, he can be kept on the ambulance trolley. In future, this might become normal practice with standardised equipment interchangeable between ambulances and hospitals. Then, in the resuscitation room, 
the patient is transferred from the portable resuscitator to the hospital equipment. The stretcher trolley that remains aboard has been moved to the centre of the ambulance to give the doctor and nurse extra room to work. A saline and glucose drip has been attached to the patient. Even lighting, plenty of headroom and space to move about make it possible for the doctor to carry out any further emergency treatment that may be necessary. By the time its field trials are over, a number of new modifications will have been made to this ambulance. Meanwhile, experts from abroad are travelling here to see it. 